I remember like yesterday, the day I went for my Mandela Washington Fellowship semi-final interview in Abuja. It was one of the most doubtful days of my adult life. It was so doubtful that when I was in a taxi going back to my office, I was almost hitting my head like this. I was thinking about things I could have said better, responses I wish I gave, things I could have said that I didn't say, all sorts of scenarios playing up in my head. The goal of this video is to boost your confidence, help you prepare better, and reduce your level of doubt as you look ahead of your MWF interview. If you are watching this video, you are most likely have already been invited for your MWF interview or you are expecting to be invited. Everything you need to know, prepare for and look forward to, this video will cover. So you don't want to miss any part of the video. You also want to subscribe at this point because this is going to give you great value and you want to like it so it gets recommended to other viewers on YouTube. Without further ado, let's get to the gist. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. It's in the air. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is E to the M to the D to the double E. MD Tiamu, and you know what we do here. This is your one stop channel for everything fellowships, scholarships, jackpotships, and experiences that help you discover Africa abroad. In case you are yet to subscribe, Biko Daala Ejo, this is the point where you hit that notification bell really, really hard and you hit the subscribe button so you get to be notified when the next video drops. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations for making it this far on your Mandela Washington Fellowship application. The semi-final rounds have officially started across the different countries where people can apply for the MWF. Now, in case you have not been notified yet, remember there's a timeline and these things are done in batches. Do not lose hope, do not despair, just be patient. And while you're waiting, this kind of content, this kind of video will help you prepare for the time when you're eventually going to face the panel. So now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is what to expect. What should you expect in this interview? Why is this interview important? Talking about what to expect, I'm going to break this down into three things. First is the essence of the semi-finals, second is the setup, and third is the duration. Now, regarding the essence, basically, this is the phase where all of the applications have been read by real human beings and they have been judged to be quite good. All of you who have made it to the semi-finals have fantastic airtight applications. Now, depending on who read your application, if you don't get to the semi-finals, it doesn't mean that your work is not important. It just means there's something about your application that is not convincing enough. So let me tell you how it works. A reader, a typical reader is given 40 applications to read. And for each, they are going to grade. They will grade you on several things, you know, from the main essence of your idea to how you approach the questions, if you really understood the question, to some other general vibes. So getting to the semi-finals means that you were able to touch the emotional point of the reader. The reader could see through you, they could see the value of the work that you are doing, and they deem you fit to move over to the next round. Now, out of the 40, there's going to be like a rank of the top three, top four, top five. The strength of your application is what makes you get to the semi-finals really. And depending on who you have been paired with in that round of 40, I think you get it. Usually the 40 people who your reader read are all from your country. So if your application falls in a pool of 39 other very, very strong applicants, you may likely not be part of the top five. The best guess is to pick the top 
best from what every reader reads. So the top best from every reader combines together and they are selected for the semi-finals. If you know your application was strong enough and you gave your best shot, you can always expect to be invited for the semi-finals. Now that you have been invited, why is the semi-finals important? The semi-final is important because any Dimeji, Tochuku and Haruna can fill up an application and be smart enough to pass through the semi-finals. This is the point where they want to see the human behind the application. So you need to generally become your application. You need to speak it. You need to vibe your application. If you're in a space of health and medical care, you need to look like it, you need to speak like it. If you're in a space of entrepreneurship, when you come for this interview, you need to speak like it, you need to look like it. That really is the essence of the interviews. Now, if we don't want to have interviews, the best thing to actually do in place of the interview is for the US government representatives in your country to actually visit where you are doing what you're doing. So if there's an opportunity for them to come see it, if you say you have a school for the homeless, you have a school for the less privileged, seeing that your school function and doing everything you say it does in your application would have been the best form of interview. But because there are so many applicants and it is difficult to go around, they invite you over. So you are carrying your school along with you. You are carrying your business along with you. You are carrying your NGO along with you. Somebody will be asking me, MD, how do I carry my school? I have 400 children that I'm taking care of. You know, how do I carry my soap business? I can't carry my factory to Kigali where my interview is going to hold. What you need to carry is the essence, the vibe, the energy of your business. Those are the things you need to carry with you. When you have a factory that has employed 300 people, as you said in your application, you need to speak and act and sound like somebody who has employed 300 people, okay? Now, do not overdo this. It's not about overdressing and it's not about the kind of car you drive to the interview venue. It's not about all those things. I have seen fellows who were lucky enough to have US government staff or representative visit their location, like their workshop, you know, or somewhere where they're actually making the impact. So what it means is that their interview already started in that time, even though the visitation was informal. So let me give an example. Some US diplomats were going around town. They went for a wedding somewhere, right? And then because this guy applied a previous year before and he wasn't selected for the fellowship, he got to the semifinals. And these US diplomats were on a different mission, leisure, right? Social engagement for a wedding in a city where he said his workshop was based. So what did they do? They remembered him during his last interview. He didn't make it to the fellowship the previous year. And then they visited him. And when they visited him, they saw that everything he said was true. He was actually helping the people he was helping. So basically his interview had already started. When he applied the next year, got to the semifinals, they just now matched the face to the experience they had when they visited him and that solved the problem. So basically that's what should really happen. But imagine they have to visit every single person. That's not possible. So what you need to do essentially is to carry as much of your work as possible to the interview. Don't bring the children as evidence, no. It is your personality that should radiate the successes that you claim and the impact that you are already making. Does that make sense to you? Now, let's talk about the setup. For the interview setup, you can expect up to three people. Usually, you won't get more than that because there are not so many people who have so much time. So, if you get up to three people, fantastic. It could be one person, it could be two, but most generally, from experience, it will be three. A combination of gender, you know, it could be two women, one man. It could be one man, two women. You can do the math. It doesn't matter. Now, would they be all Americans? Maybe, yes. Maybe, no. But the basic thing is there would be some high-level U.S. staff, diplomats, or representatives. Or there could also be people who have gone so really deep into U.S. exchange programs that they are now contracted to sit on the interview. Whoever they are, you can expect to meet up to three people. Now, just like every other interview, one energy that you have versus three sources of energy that you are going to be facing 
can actually put you off balance and this is where your confidence actually comes in you want to be sure that you are prepared very very well for this interview because literally it is just one source of energy that you have and these are three sources of energy just like every other interview the interviewer usually has some level of power more than the interviewee it is the interviewee that needs to play the emotional game properly so that you speak with power too like i always tell my mentees power does not recognize any other thing power only recognizes guess what power so you need to come to the table with some level of confidence and with some level of power the power to choose and not to choose reside in these three people and if they choose not to choose you there's almost nothing you can do about it. If they decide to choose you, then you'll be one of the lucky ones who gets to the finals and who heads to the United States for the fellowship very soon. The interview panel is usually three, just so if there's an argument, there's one person who can break the tie. Because usually, two people will choose, one person wouldn't choose. So that's that about the setup. Treat it like any other high-level interview, however, with some twists that I'm going to mention pretty soon in this video and regarding the duration you are expecting to spend between 10 minutes and 30 minutes depending on how interesting your application is and how interested they are your application and your work can be very interesting but they may not really be interested in it but if they're very interested in it they may ask you more questions than they will ask other people. They can ask you fewer questions if they think your application is clear enough. But just book out between 10 to 30 minutes. Also, the duration can be determined by how many people have been scheduled for that interview that day. Also, another thing that determines how long your interview will last is whether you come first, second, third, you know, on the schedule for the day. If you're the last one, it's possible the interviewers are a little bit fatigued and they just want to quickly wrap up things but it doesn't affect if they're going to choose you or not so just take your timing as what it is give it your best shot your timing doesn't matter the, the amount of time they use in meeting with you doesn't really matter it matters how much of impression you make so long and short the essence of this interview the setup and the duration combined is to put a face behind the work and you are trying to make an impression do not overdo it do not underdo it and we're going to talk about that when we get there now it's also very very important to note at this stage that this mwf semi-final interview is not visa interviews it's not if you make it to the finals you are going to do a visa interview separately when you are trying to get your j1 visa that'll take you to the united states so do not go and tell people that ah you just went for u.s visa interview no that's not the case and in fact they try as much as possible to not host these interviews at the u.s embassy because people will mistake it they'll say i'm going to the embassy i have an interview there automatically i'm preparing or i'm waiting for a u.s visa that's not the case it's when you make it to the semi-finals you go through your pre-departure orientation and then you can now show up for your j1 visa interview and get prepared to hit the plane and get to the united states so this is not a u.s visa interview it's an interview to further sieve the good guys from the very very good guys because it's the very very good guys that will make it to the finals in my own case during our time rumors had it that we were 600 of us in the semi-finals and they wanted to choose just 800 so for every six people who show up for the interview the judges want to pick just one for every six and that was my batch that was my set that was so many years ago and i don't know what the numbers will be for you so just think about it like that for every six for example who show up to that room they are only going to choose one so their job is already hard enough your job is to make that job simple for them they don't have to fight or argue too much to choose you let your impact be so obvious and so clear that is the essence of the interview let it be so convincing and compelling to say you know what if we don't pick this guy it's like we're making a big mistake <laughs> That is the kind of impression you want to leave without overstretching it, without over bragging it, without, you know, doing too much. The kind of impression you want to leave is an impression that says when you're stepping out of that interview room, they want to look at themselves and say, you know what, if we don't pick this one, 
Even like we don't make mistake. It's like we're making a mistake. If we don't pick this guy, we have to pick him. So let it be them arguing that you know what? This guy should make it. So the consensus of the three of them is going to determine if you make it or not. I'll not tell you the rest of the gist here. Let's move to how to prepare for your Mandela Washington Fellowship semi-final interview. So how do you prepare for your Mandela Washington Fellowship semi-final interviews? First things first, download your application. Like I told you during that application phase, keep a copy of the final, final application you submitted. Go back to the application portal and download a copy of your application. I know most of you already have it. In case you're part of the 1% of the people who don't have the application saved, Go back there and download it. That's a very step number one. Step number two is that you need to speak and be your application. Like I said, the essence of this is to see how real, how true, how genuine this application is. Because in the end, there's a lot of catfishes on the internet. You know what catfish is? People who, once you want to pick them, they rig my role. They rig my role. They are not really who they say they are. They are not true to the things they have written. Probably somebody even wrote the entire things for them. So the interviewers want to look through your face. They want to read through your countenance to see how genuine you are, how correct and how real everything you said is. So you have to speak and you have to be the person and show the things you have written in your application. The very top thing is what I call evidences. You see, evidences are very good points of impression. These are either an object, product, or a service, or a solution that is so vivid that even the interviewers can verify by themselves. For example, in my own case, I had a mobile application built for youth in Nigeria that was on several app stores. It was on the Google Play Store, it was on the Apple App Store. In fact, it shocked me when one of the interviewers said he downloaded my app and he was benefiting from the application. That there is an evidence that shows that the reality end of things they are trying to confirm, the genuineness they are trying to confirm, I already ticked that box. So whatever brings that your genuineness to play, it could be a newspaper publication that has you in it. It could be a feature you had on the TV. You may want to reference it. You may want to mention the name of that TV station that booked you to speak about the things that connect to the things in your application. General speaking engagement of people who just invited you for church may not count, but verifiable engagement that are directly, underline those words, verifiable, directly connected to your work. They can be very good pieces of evidence. If you're somebody who is into arts and crafts, let's say you make beads or you make whatever, whatever you made, and you have somehow made it to the semifinals, you may want to wear that, you know, you may want to wear it, and once in a while, you know, move your hand around to show that this is an evidence of your work, whatever it is. You may do something like, you know, a little puppy, a little badge with the art and craft and point to it once in a while on what you're doing with it. It could be a sticker that you make. You have donated 5,000 pieces of this sticker to XYZ places and you have been able to raise money. If that is what your application is about, that tiny little evidence that connects visuals, what they can see to your application can go a long, long, long way. If you're an art person, you are, you know, a fine artist, you may bring one of your artwork just to show, you know, because sometimes it's difficult to place the value of the work people do because their garage, their workstation, the location of their impact is so far away that the interviewers are trying to imagine it in their heads. So you want to find something. It could be tangible, it could be intangible to bring along. Remember that the interviewers will not take gifts because they don't want their decisions to be impaired 
and they also do not want to be implicated, so you cannot give them gifts. Anything you are bringing would just be a piece of evidence. And I've seen situations and scenarios where evidences actually work. I told you my own case, the app. One of the judges told me straight off that he has my app on his phone. I first was thrown off because I was like, hey God, let him not go and see that bug that I'm trying to fix. You know, an app always has something that is wrong with it that only the developer knows. The developer knows, oh, I need to fix that part, but people can't see it. So in my head, I was a little bit, you know, fidgeting, like hope he has not seen that part of the app that will crash, you understand? Or that will still crash soon. But that was the piece of evidence that kind of knocked me in. I have also told you the case of the guy who was visited in his workshop by US representative. That was a piece of evidence. So if you don't get the chance to have built an app, if you don't get the chance to have been visited by US representatives who would connect you with your application, find something no matter how small to what? To be an evidence or a point of reference for your application. Last, last, all you are trying to do is to leave a lasting impression, something that they will remember. Another point here is about time. Make sure you are very timely. They are most likely not going to be able to shift your interview date. If you miss it, it would be tough for you to get another date. It's not impossible. They probably will be able to give you another date. But if you have been given a date and time and you confirm it and you miss it, it will be very, very tough for you to rebook another one. So be there at least 20 minutes early. So in case the person that's supposed to be before you didn't show up or somehow they just found a free time and they want to skip things up, you are already there. So 20 minutes, 30 minutes early is fine. Know the situation of traffic in your city. If you're coming from another city, make sure you are in the city of your interview the night before. It is worth the stress, it is worth the effort, and you are going to be grateful for it. The second to the last point is that you approach this interview from a place of networking. Now, apart from sitting in front of the judges, at the lobby, while you're waiting, when you're done, you're going to meet with other semi-finalists like yourself. Follow them on their IG, collect their numbers, and keep in touch. Sometimes, it's not everybody that will make it to the finals, but you would be able to make friends with which you are going to build networks, you're going to build friendships, and you can do greater things together. Remember, your impact story, your work, is not 100% tied to the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Whether you get this fellowship or not, you are great. You will still do wonders. You are still going to do everything you really need to do so do not really be bothered however give it your best these are the strategies i have for you to prepare one key last strategy and this is where i come in and this is where i can personally support you in case you need it look deeply at your application and generate 10 exciting tough uncommon scenarios of things they could ask you and I can actually help you with this. If I look at your application and I look at your person, I can actually guide you through this. If you want that service from me, please click the link in the description and reach out really quick. There's so many people talking to me in the DM. The faster you reach out, the earlier I can actually book you for a one-on-one -on -one session. In that session, I would get your application as you have submitted it. I would be in the head of the judges We'll walk through these scenarios together. I'll work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we're gonna do an entire one-hour call. Just me and you. And we're gonna do like a demo interview. With everything that I know, everything that I'm sharing and everything else that I cannot share publicly. We're gonna do this session with you and very, very hopefully, you'll be in a better place regarding your interview. Just a quick recap for you. Download your application, right? Second is what? Be it, speak it. Third is evidences. Evidences really, really count. Whatever it will be, I can answer your questions later. Number four, time is very, very important. Stick to time, keep to time, be timely. Five, approach it from a networking 
point of view. See it as a next level for you. It's on do or die. Make a lot of friends. Make a lot of friends. I'm mentioning that. Make a lot of friends that you are hopefully going to partner with because everybody at the semifinals has already proven to be doing something important. So why don't you link up? And then finally is a scenario thing, which I am very happy and hopeful I will work with you on. So what should you wear to this interview? Well, consider it as any kind of standard interview. Corporate works. For the fellowship itself, when you eventually get to the US, to take your classes and your leadership lessons and all of the outdoor activities and all of the visitations, most times you'll be on business casual. If you don't know what business casual is, check that up, you know, on Google. Just type business casual American. That will be your dress code for most of the activities on the fellowship. But for the interview, you are dealing with most likely people in your local country. They could be foreigners, but they are people who think corporate. And they want you to apply corporate hood, corporateness to the interview. So just keep it corporate. Something simple. I learned from someone that somehow... If you tilt the color of your dressing to look a little American, maybe that works. The American flag has two primary colors, red and blue. You may want to wear something with a touch of red or something with a touch of blue. Do not go and wear all red. Blue is still good, but if you wear an all red, it may look somehow. Except you look absolutely gorgeous in it and you are comfortable. But whatever it is, just be comfortable in what you wear. It's not about what you wear as much as it is how you carry it, okay? So if you can carry it, don't put on high heels if you're not comfortable in it. Just be comfortable. Number two, in terms of what you wear, wear your real self. Do not overdo your face so you look like what you don't look like in the application. Just be as genuine as possible. And finally, the most important thing to wear to this interview is confidence. Wear your confidence. Go into your wardrobe and bring confidence out and wear it. Wear it like you're wearing a garment. Own your application. Be the person that you said you are, you know, and a lot more. Let them see that the application limited you somehow and that you are even more than what the application could contain. So when you do this, you would almost be fine. Regarding the dressing, you can almost not go wrong if you are comfortable. For dressing, if you are comfortable in what you're wearing, you are good. Try and keep it corporate because it's a corporate interview and the people you are going to be meeting will be dressing corporate. So if you are too casually dressed, you look a little bit different from them and psychologically, they may not be able to balance that. You know, when it comes to judging matters, the people who are going to be judging you are human beings right blood flows through their veins and basically they're trying to look at themselves in you they're trying to find who they are in you that balance of finding themselves in your shoes the more they can consider you meanwhile do not speak in a foreign accent except you truly have that accent because it makes you feel fake remember i said that you need to wear realness Realness means you are speaking your English to the best of your knowledge. They know you are not American. Why are you trying to speak like one? They know. And that gives a faulty coloration to your interview. Speak like your normal Kenyan self. Speak like your normal Gambian self. Speak like your regular Ethiopian self. They love it. They like that diversity. They understand who you are. They know where you're coming from. And they are not expecting to sell an accent to you. So do not speak like you are an American. Speak like yourself. Be real. Be confident. And be comfortable in what you wear. I think that will do it for you. Once you are done with the interview. And you have done everything you really need to do forget about it again remember so many people have tried more times than you have and they still haven't gotten 
even to the semi-finals. For you getting to the semi-finals, it means you're doing something right. And if you eventually get to the finals, that is excellent. Remember that for things that have to do with fellowships and scholarship, you can always reach me. As a matter of fact, I'm dropping a link in the description for you to reach out for your personalized coaching regarding any of those levels of engagement that you have. This is me, your friend, E to the M to the D to the double E, wishing you the very, very, very best of luck until we meet personally or until you send me your final congratulations that you are now a Mandela Washington Fellow. I'll see you next time. You have a right to be motivated. Bye.